Mando. Good greetings and good afternoon to all. Good morning for the ones uh, connected from California and the West Coast. For the, my name is Ibarquis Montalvo. I'm the executive director. Thank you for accepting our invitation to this webinar uh, titled Quality Online, Developing Capacity to Deliver a Quality Student Learning Experience at the course program and institution level. Today, we have more than 150 participants registered from institutions in Puerto Rico, including uh, professors from public schools, uh, K-12. So welcome all. Also, we have from the US institutions like University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, that actually are the hosts of this Blackboard Collaborate uh, platform that it uh, have. So thank you to our colleagues for their support on this on your side. Also, we have from California, excuse me, College State Staten Island, John Jay College, Lehman College, one of our founding members, also from Bronx Community College and California State University, San Bernardino. Also, we have from some organizations like Internet, Internet Society, a chapter of Puerto Rico. So greeting to all. We hope that this webinar will be a great benefit uh, to everyone. We, should, we would like to recognize the support of Dr. Carlos Morales, Chairman of the Heads Board of Directors and President of Taran County College Connect Campus. Uh, uh, he is with, uh, today with us. Thank you for your help in coordinating this webinar. As you may know, HEADS commitment is to support and serve our more than 40 member institutions in Puerto Rico, Latin America, and in the United States. But with these webinars, we would like to share this best practice and experience to everyone who we, not only our members benefit, so, so all of you. So thank you for accepting this invitation. With this in mind, our chairman, Dr. Carlos Morales, invite uh, Deborah Adair, uh, Dr. Deborah Adair, Executive Director and CEO of Quality Matters, that she's here today with us. Also, Jay Japin Gao, the Senior Academic Director of Quality Matters, and Fernando Senior, Dr. Fernando Senior, also from Quality Matters representative for Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, they will be the presenters of today's webinar. But before we begin today's topic, we invite you to use the chat to write your questions or doubts uh, as our interest is to clarify uh, all the doubts about this topic. We ask that you keep, please, your microphones in mute to avoid interruptions as this webinar is being recorded for your reference uh, later and also for the ones that can couldn't uh, uh, join us uh, live today. This recording will be can be found uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow on the same page you were uh, you registered. Uh, so please uh, look in the same page you register in past webinars at the bottom of the page, and you will see the title of the webinar with the link to the recording. We also remind you that in the in the next event section of our homepage website heads.org, you can find all the topics that will be offered during this uh, will be offering during this semester in English and Spanish, and also the recording of the past ones. So uh, that you can and and please uh, please all the webinars uh, almost all of them are free of charge, but but please separate your space uh, register. Uh, going there to register and then uh, you will receive the link to connect the day of the event. Uh, the next one will be in, Sp in Spanish, uh, the next webinar, and is uh, about strategy strategies to create accessible and inclusive virtual learning environments and that will be on Thursday, September 17, 2020 from 3 p.m to 4 p.m. Eastern time or Puerto Rico time. And uh, it will be by Professor uh, Professor Rolando Mendez Fernandez, assistant by president of online education at the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. So don't miss the opportunity to uh, register for this webinar too. Finally, participants who are interested uh, in certificates, you know that HEADS offered a free of charge a certificate, a participation, uh, certificate of participation. Just send us an email at info at heads.org to 
requested with your name and the date of the webinar. And this semester, as you may see, when you register, we also have a partnership with Inter-American University uh, continuing ed uh, office, so you can pay uh, for a certificate of continuing uh, uh, education, uh, just $5 per certificate, and the instructions to request it are right there be below the registration area. If you have any doubt, please feel free to uh, call us or send us an email. Now we are ready to start our webinar, and I am pleased to present Dr. Carlos Morales, head chair, who will uh, moderate the webinar and present our guest uh, speakers today. Please, Dr. Morales, and thank you. On mute, oh, all right. Are you? Uh, uh, yes, I think yeah. you can hear me now. All right. Good yeah. afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here with us this afternoon for the webinar quality online developing capacity to deliver a quality student learning experience at the course program and institutional level it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend deborah adair dr adair from quality matters um, she's the executive director and ceo for quality matters an international non-profit organization providing a scalable quality assurance system for online and blended learning within within and across organizations. It is utilized by over uh, 1,300 institutions spanning K-12 higher education and professional and corporate training across all the 50 United States and 20 other countries. QM tools, training and processes allow education professionals to share resources and knowledge as they work to improve technology, enhance education and meet QM's nationally recognized standards. Dr. Adair has more than 30 years of experience in higher education, in teaching and administration, as well as nonprofit leadership and management consulting. She currently serves on the board of directors for the International Network for Quality Assurance Agencies in Higher Education, INQAAHE, and thus uh, uh, have served in other um, advisory bodies for the WICHI Cooperative for Educational Technologies, NUTN and the President's Forum as well. She is an author and she has presented extensively in the topic of online learning. Her educational background uh, is um, a doctoral and master's degrees from University of Arizona and her bachelor's degree from uh, Boston University. She also is a graduate from the community college sector in Broward. With her uh, is also Yapin Gao. Uh, Dr. Gao is the senior academic director and uh, for member services and partnerships at Quality Matters. And she oversees as well as leads the member services and partnerships with a focus on international outreach and initiatives. Dr. Gao has more than 25 years of experience in higher education, both in China and in the United States as a faculty member, instructional designer, learning management administrator, and an online educator at a administrator. Dr. Gao earned a doctoral degree in curriculum and instruction and a concentration in instructional design and educational technology from Baylor University in Texas, and her master and bachelor's degree from Shanghai International Studies, Studies I'm sorry, University in Shanghai, China. With uh, them is also Dr. Fernando Sr. and he is the international representative for Quality Matters for Latin America and the Caribbean. And he promotes Quality Matters internationally, is especially uh, among the Spanish speaking countries in the Latin American uh, region. And he has more than 35 years of experience supporting learning and quality assurance initiatives in higher education, industry, government, and nonprofit sectors north central and south america he is the former president of ipstp the international board of standards and training uh, performance and dr senior also promotes research and adoption of standards of practice for learning professionals his doctoral degree is in curriculum and instruction from the university of illinois and on bernard champagne and his master's degree is in educational technology at the rochester institute of technology and his bachelor's is from a uh, university of puerto rico maya west in psychology so with that said i want to pass the microphone to a uh, doctor adair and uh, her team so take it away thank you carlos and uh good afternoon everyone and uh i'm um and if you'll in indulge me i'm only going to spend a few minutes um 
sort of setting up the conversation here so that we can talk at, at the sort of the highest level and most broadly and Yaping and Fernando will um, take this to a, uh, a, a uh, more granular level to, to talk about how we actually do this work. So uh, I think the starting place for us and I would guess for most of you is around the student learning experience. And um, this is this is our, our quality pie, and really, it's to say that uh, we see the student learning experience being impacted by a number of factors. Course design is very important for online courses, but so is the course delivery, how that course is taught, the content of the course, the institution's policies and resources, especially around the academic and student support services, the technology, which would be the LMS, as well as the technology in the course, and the level of preparedness of faculty and students for online learning. All of these things are uh, really play a pivotal role in what the student experiences in the online course. So. Before we go a little bit further, I just, just to sort of warm us all up, um, it, to think for a minute of, about, in your opinion, which of these do you think is the most important in its impact on the student learning experience? And I'd like to ask you to take a, just a few minutes and just type what you think in the chat. What you think, which of these factors do you think is most important for student learning? I'll just give you a few minutes. We really want to see. I see some coming in already. Yes. So good, good. Uh, and I'm, uh, I have to say, I'm really happy to see how these are coming in. That um, you can see, some of you are saying all of them are equally important, and and uh, some of you are, are mentioning others. And um, you sort of, you know, teeing me up for the the point I'm trying to make here is really, you know, I think we all realize that all of these are important. And sometimes in institutions, you know, we tend to to think about the responsibility for these things um, as discrete, but they're also shared, right? So um, there are factors that come into play at the course level, but also the program level and institutional level. So um, I think we we see faculty as having more direct impact on how that course is, is designed and how it's taught and, of course, the, the content, but there are uh, differences in at the program level and in institutional resources and policies and even culture that can impact the quality of what's in that online course and the online platform. So for us, the takeaway is really that it's imperative to keep in mind that the that the work we're doing is part of a larger system, and to recognize the ongoing need for the integration of effort. So uh, you know, ultimately, working in silos does not advance student success. And so um, I think what, what we're trying, and Yeping, you can advance that slide if you would. So really what we're, we try to promote is this, uh, a goal to enable and facilitate quality assurance with an integrated process, right? To, we might start from building from quality standards, um, but to, to, to have that recognition that that these things are all integrated and any approach to improve quality has to be integrated. So for QM specifically, uh, we do that through the rubric standards, through the professional development that we provide, and through the course and program level reviews. And these processes are all integrated. So the professional development is helping faculty um, understand and use the standards in how they design courses and how they teach courses. Um, and the, the course and program reviews are looking at the, the and evaluating the quality of standards and more importantly, providing feedback about how 
courses can be improved and programs can be improved. So it's those results of your efforts to um, apply the processes and to evaluate that are having the, the biggest impact for, for students. And so, um, because, uh, you know, how the design standards have implications for how you teach. Your content and your pedagogy has implications for how you would design. And so all of these things are interrelated. So uh, where we end up is um, uh, the work that you would do if you're, if you're engaging in quality matters is uh, really going to have implications not just at the course level but at the program uh, level and at the institution level. So what you're doing essentially can help drive quality at all levels of the organization. Um, so I'm going to at this point pass this over to Dr. Gao. Okay, so can you all hear me well? Yes. So okay. Um, yes. yes yeah. Thanks, Deb. Um, uh, thanks, Deb, for sharing um, the context and uh, set the stage for us. Um, as Deb mentioned, you know we have been QM has been working with a large community in the in the past one and a half decades, really. And the QM community is expanding. So if you look at this map, you know, you will see we are um, serving over 1,300 member institutions in 23 countries and across six continents. So um, while we continue to serve and to support our community to achieve their um, uh, goals. Uh, we really learn tremendously, I mean, on a daily basis uh, from our community. And we also heavily rely on the community to for everything that we do. And as the saying goes, you know, it takes an entire village, right, to raise a child. And it is certainly very, very true for the education community as well. Um, it really takes the entire institution uh, to provide quality learning-centered environments for our students. So at this point, um, if you don't mind, if you can um, share in by type in the chat, uh, what is your main uh, job or your title, your job title or your main duty responsibility uh, in your institution? I'll just give you one or two minutes to do that. If you can share, that'd be great. So I'm seeing faculty, uh, compliance officer, professor, faculty, supporting staff, uh, faculty again. Yeah, faculty. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Faculty, department chair, things, et cetera. Yeah. Great. Great. Wonderful. Coordinator, program manager, administration, um, instruction designers. Yay. Um, administration, administrator as well. Okay, so wonderful. So we really have a wonderful representation of the different roles uh, in the institutional uh, level. So um, if you are a teaching faculty, and it sounds like a like at least a half, if not uh, two thirds of us are faculty. And if you're teaching faculty, or if you're your instructional designer, your daily work would be focused on, you know, choosing the right instructional material. You want to uh, design effective assessments, learning activities to help students. But if you are um, a program manager or if you, you know, your focus will be on the program outcomes, the competency, you know, um, the curriculum rigor, faculty, uh, faculty development, faculty support, uh, faculty credentials, et cetera, et cetera. And if you are an administration uh, level, you know, your um, top uh, priority would certainly include the institutional accreditation, uh, certainly student enrollment, uh, and uh, completion rate, graduation rate, you know, the institutional culture, the governance, and um, uh, your uh, accountability to all the stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. So it really, if you look at this whole picture, every role 
people, everybody we work at the institution, uh, there need to be a, 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 a really close and the where, uh, where alignment. Everything has to support each other, you know, from the course level and to the program level to the institutional level. So, so that the institutional resources and the priorities can be streamlined in order to achieve the maximum uh, return on investment for the entire institution. So, uh, let me move forward here. Uh, oh, too far. So, uh, very quickly, uh, just allow me a few more minutes to uh, share um, some of the basic elements or the essential elements or considerations on um, each of those levels. I'm not going to um, a lot of detail because uh, Dr. Senior will dive deep uh, into each of those on how to build capacity. So on the course level, um, I think that two considerations or two categories of considerations are very um, important for us, for faculty and for instructional designers as well. So first of all, as far as course design is concerned, um, the principle of alignment is essential. That means everything that in the course, um, uh, there needs to be a very good alignment between and among the major course components. So if you look at the graphic on the left, you know, you start with the learning objectives. And I'm sure that for those, um, for those of us who's um, doing the instructional design work, you can certainly speak a lot to this, right? So you start with the learning objectives or learning outcomes, and you will help faculty uh, to you know how what is the best way to assess students, and everything else in between the 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 uh, uh, course content certainly, uh, the learning activities and uh, all the technologies that you're using online or as part of the RMS. All of this needs to have a purpose. Each one uh, needs to have a purpose. And the purpose is you're using this to help students achieve the learning outcomes. And the other big uh, uh, category of consideration is really once you have the courses were designed, now you really have to provide a good learning experience for students and that would include certainly uh, the teaching presence and uh, interaction, how you students. Uh, you want to make the content accessible and you want to have um, uh, uh, the resources, the, um, uh, uh, all the support services that online students would need. So that's a quick overview at the course level. Um, at the program level, um, we certainly uh, know that a lot of um, uh, resources and has been uh, put into uh, 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 design the program, right? Including uh, mapping the curriculum, ensuring the academic rigor and integrity. Of course, cert uh, certainly faculty, uh, um, faculty training support, etc. So all of this are what your institution is putting into the program. But what is the outcome? What is the what is it that you want to achieve? So the outcome is really you want to ensure that the students are actually learning, the students are actually mastering what they're supposed to be mastering at the program level. So let me move on the advance here. And um, um, at the institutional level, for those of us who are serving as institutional uh, administrators, and especially if you are at a higher level, and um, you are certainly aware of the CREC guidelines, right? This is from the kind of regional accrediting uh, commissions, and they have this um, set of nine um, guidelines that they use for the evaluation of um, uh, DE, distance education. And as we all know that all the US-based um, regional accrediting bodies uh, use uh, this set of guidelines in their uh, peer, peer 
review process for institutions um, accreditation or reaccreditation if the institutions offer online courses or programs. So uh, for the purpose of this quick um, slide, I combined a few of them um, into one slot. But you know, uh, everything needs to be uh, coordinated, aligned, and support each other because the goal is really to achieve the institutional mission and the goals. So everything has to be support each other and serve that purpose. So um, I think I'm going to stop here and now I'm going to um, turn it over to Dr. Senior to dive just a little bit deeper on building capacity um, to provide students with quality learning experience at each of those levels. So Dr. Senior. I think to make it easier, uh, let me just uh, share my screen. It'll be the same sure. presentation, but it'll be easier for me to just to go through it. OK, um, so I'm going to stop, right? Yes, but okay. please do better. Please. OK, yeah. You have the privilege Listo. to share, right? Yes, I think so. Uh -huh. Yes, you do. Share content depending if you have it in the screen uh, or as a file. Okay, can you see it now? Let me. Oh yes, we do. All right. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna, as as Yaping says, I'm gonna just drill down more to the so what level at the course at the program at the institutional level. Specific things that that make a difference uh, as we approach. Uh, course design, course delivery, uh, the the offers for the our online off, uh, our, our, our online programs uh, through the lens of, of what we do here at QM, and at the course level, I'm going to touch on only these three topics: uh, the quality standards, the alignment. Come back, come back to specific issues about the alignment, and regarding sort of the the learning promise that we make as as an organization. Well, first we start off with with the with the standards, and and you may know or probably would like to know that uh, one of the primary products of of QM as a community is the uh, making available res um, research really grounded uh, standards for the design of online instruction. This is really what led to the creation of of QM as a collaboration of institutions that develop. Uh, the first set of standards as a result of a, uh, of a research study. Uh, and that led eventually to what do we do next? And, and, and that was how, how QM was born. And I always mention this because it's part of the attribute of QM to sustain this sense of, of community and engagement and collaboration. And the standards, which are specific standards and general standards, are divided in eight big blocks. And then there's drill down to very specific standards. And just to bring 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 this to a level of of, of so what part? Uh, if we take the for example the, the the standards for 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 learning objectives, uh, which is something that I, I constantly work as I assist organizations who are either improving their face-to-face -face instruction or want to migrate to the online uh, environment. Uh, this pro offers an opportunity to be more precise and be more selective about exactly what is it that we're committing ourselves as an institution, as instructors, uh, to deliver to our, our learners. What, what are they committing to do and what are we are expecting to learn? So we make a start off by saying, and as you can see, it's broken down into five specific uh, review standards just for the objectives. First, asking, are these learning objectives um, uh, measurable? Uh, are they accessible? Uh, can, can we commit to them? Can, we, can learners really um, in, invest their time and effort and, 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 and have the expectations that they will actually achieve this at the end of the course? Then further down is, are the once we break down our course into units or modules or whatever the terms it's used at the institution, uh, they're still being consistent. And what I often ha see happen here 
is that not really unintentionally, but on the face-to-face -face, uh, the practice, we normally declare objectives and they're just like a statement written in the course syllabus, but the courses go where they tend to go. And, and this is actually a quote and share, I'll share with you uh, actually a, a testimonial from a faculty member at the major university in the US that she resisted to put putting her course online as a graduate, uh, graduate school business because she didn't believe that she could do a good job or that it could actually her course could be taught online. And ultimately, uh, and then I'll, I can share, actually I'll share on the, on, the, on, the, on the chat, the actual testimonial. And is this lessons learned is that you need typically on the classroom, on the face-to-face class, -face classrooms, again, we declare the objectives, we don't necessarily pay attention to them and the class evolves and you do whatever time is allows. But in the online world, we need to be more precise because that provides consistency, that provides more guidance for the learner who's not there with you, seeing you or asking you questions directly. And so right from the bat, we need to be specific about what is that we're committing to. And that you can see in the, the following objectives still being more precise in terms of being written or expressed from the point of view of the learner. What is it that you learner will be able to do or expect, be expected to do? As opposed to what's more typical is this course is about A, B, and C, which typically describes topics, uh, a list of issues that will be mentioned or discussed in the course. That's very different from you learner should be able to complete or be able to do this. And then the connection between objectives and competencies and or, or, or activities and I often use the, just the example, just to make the illustration. If you sign up uh, to represent your country in the Olympics, and you're going to run, you're going to run 100 meters from years from today, you're going to be training and practicing running 400 meters, and that, has, that your practice needs to be consistent with what with the goal established. And what happens in the uh, in instruction, typically, especially face to face that's kind of loosely followed. And so if, to follow the same analogy, it's like you show up four years later in the Olympics, and it's like, well, guess what, it's raining, so you have to do synchronized swimming. I mean, that, that would, never, would not happen in the Olympics, but somehow it happens uh, when we don't provide enough or relevant practice or connect learning activities to the goal that we're committing to. And then finally, to making sure that the that the that the level the objective is 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 relevant uh, for the level the level of the course. And as a com commentary, when we do course reviews, which is uh, what you all are familiar with, with the institutional accreditations, with uh, peer reviewers and the like, we adopt the same process except that it's on a petite committee, and the object is really your course and how to improve your course. And, and, and how to help you obtain certification. Uh, and in that process, one of the committee members, just as it happens with accreditation, will be knowledgeable about, about the content area that's, that course has been evaluated. So then that, the, this, the, the issue of alignment is the second look at uh, sort of a, 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 another way of looking at, the, at these standards and saying, even though we specify all these standards or all these specific standards, there's a special relationship. There's a unique relationship that needs to be maintained because they become the backbone of every course. And that starts with the learning objectives, as I was just mentioning, that they're clear, that they're uh, described from the learner's perspective, that they talk to each other, that one objective in one unit still maintains in, in connection with the course level objective and that the assessments are relevant to the objecti objectives that are declared. So that learners are uh, successful uh, in achieving those, uh, those uh, goals. And to make that happen, then to make sure that the instructional materials, learning activities and the tools are relevant. And that's easily said and done, uh, but just to give you an example, again, unintentionally, you just, when you're not really pu putting that level of, of attention or detail into the intricacy and relationships. I recently reviewed a course uh, of an institution 
who had a fully online course, is a fully online institution, offers a course in, in um, electrical circuit as part of a, as a, as a technical degree program in, uh, in automation. It's the only course they take in the entire curriculum and some of the resources might be relevant and some of the objectives, except that the activities and the assessment are, were, were things like um, discussion boards. And the discussion board might be relevant for some issues, discussing applications or cases, but not really for the expected outcome of them being able to troubleshoot, diagnose, or even fix or build electrical circuits. You can't get away building a circuit just by discussing your way through a problem. You have to, at the very least, run a simulation. So, and of course, when you point that out, you, you're pointing the obvious, but when you're too close to the course, you don't necessarily see it or, or don't see that missing link. And so forcing you to see a course designed through the lens of specific uh, um, standards allows you not to miss steps, just like a pilot. Well, they still have to do the, the pre-flight checklist. Uh, they still do today. Uh, and it does, doesn't matter how many hours of flight uh, you have as a pilot, you still need to go through the checklist before you start your, 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 your flight. Well, the, the standards help in that way. And then that that's relates to engagement as well, because online learning is not about presenting content at a distance. It's not correspondence school. Uh, there's an element of interaction that is expected uh, between the learners and the faculty and among learners. And I, I wanted to make reference to this model, for example, community of inquiry model that looks specifically at interaction among learners themselves with faculty, with activities, with resources. So, and I like really the tr this term of, of uh, the teaching presence uh, and how one thing is to have the, the faculty being present and responding and providing examples or, or probing with further questions, discussions uh, versus the social that you feel part of a, this, uh, your, this uh, community, even though you're, you're, you're physically apart, but you have a sense of, of collaboration and, and, and trust. Uh, versus the cognitive presses, meaning you really engage with the discussion of the topics and the questions and the issues and the cases and solving problems. So it's, so it's, you, that's, it, it doesn't happen by just by default. It has to be designed. And, and so forcing you to look at different aspects of, of interaction and how that relates to assessment and how that relates to uh, to, to outcomes and the resources that you provide, as the example that I just shared with, the, with this electrical circuit uh, course, which would work great if you at least provide a, a virtual simulator for an electrical circuit, but uh, a discussion board is, is not enough. Um, so uh, again, so, the, so the, the, the standards, again, allow you to go step by step. So ultimately, really, uh, it's we don't want to lose sight and we don't, get, we don't want to get lost in the technology and the resources and the media and in their interactions and keeping track of students. We want to don't lose sight of the fact that our job is really is to commit to our promise, the promise that we, we, we commit to with our learners and that's their success. Uh, and they're, they're trusting in us in guiding that process. Mm -hmm. Now, switching chap uh, chapters to, to the program uh, level, um, and I'm going to only address two issues. One is the issue of consistency and also of faculty development. Uh, consistency in a sense, and this is also a way I, I explain it to institutions, when in the typical sort of face-to-face -face, uh, experience, when we work with faculty and when we allow as we as we monitor sort of as education and teaching unfolds in the classroom, institutions define courses. They may define at the, at a curricular level the uh, the syllabus and the objectives and the intention and the like. But really, what happens in the classroom uh, is just behind closed doors. Uh, every faculty member 
regardless of whether they're teaching the same course, bring its own expertise, its own ex personality, its own approach to teaching. And that's good in a sense that provides sort of unique experiences for learners, but it also makes it more complex in the online environment because as every faculty is allowed to design their own interpretation of how to teach courses and how to structure courses for the learners, from the learner's perspective, every time they enter an online classroom, even if it's in the same program, it may look totally different. Uh, it may have some resources, it may have some institutional policies or may not have them. Uh, it may be structured in, in weeks or in modules. It could be the same time frame. So there is there's a, a value of, of basic, basically, if it, this was a choir, everyone out of the same musical score as opposed to everyone improvising. So developing, uh, example, uh, master courses or master templates or or um, flagship uh, programs or, pro or templates that are, are used and that these templates are based on best practices like standards is the best way to instill consistency within courses, throughout programs, throughout schools, throughout multiple sections, and even throughout multiple campuses. Otherwise, one single course, and we've discussed it, Yapping mentioned at some point, working at an institution, and she asked to see the most uh, used uh, courses at the institution, which happened to be like an intro to uh, English composition, and there were 100 versions of the same course. Uh, it's easy to see that and imagine that in a face-to-face -face environment, but it's much more difficult for learners to go through if they have to experience that. Then as far as faculty development, there are several uh, thinking of how do we help and how do we support and how do we encourage uh, faculty to become uh, sort of excellent in, in also being successful, facilitating learners learning. These are things that we offer for, for, from uh, within um, QM, but again, these are just point to examples of the kinds of support that every institution uh, within their own, with their own resources can also provide from supporting the specific skills about for teaching uh, online to uh, providing ongoing activities. In this case, we offer like web conferences or conferences or, or allow QM to become a platform so that members can share their success stories and how they did it and examples and show the tools and how they 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 integrate or what kinds of resources they obtain. And then we have some specific uh, resources. And I, I try to, for example, just as, as an example, to divide the offer that from QM provide to faculty, which in the same way any institution with their own resources could structure the offer in the same way. And that is, one is to define what resources we provide to faculty when they are on their on the design mode. And we are inviting them to become the creators of the learning environment as opposed to adopting the course that was designed by others. And so as some examples here, which in some way I try to structure it in a, you know, in a progression, like from going from face-to-face -to, -face to blended courses and how to go into what things to consider as you prepare to design online courses and, and then drilling down to even specific things like creating a sort of a welcoming environment or addressing accessibility or usability for, for your learners or, or looking at specific aspects such as connecting uh, learning objectives with assessments as with this example that I share about the about this yeah, electronics uh, course. That's separate from the the role of once a course is built, uh, things that will facilitate you being successful in managing the learning process, uh, such as um, being able to provide sort of strategies for providing, providing good orientation to learners, um, how to be um, creating your presence, as this example that I was showing before. It's not enough to respond emails, 
You have to be cognitively present and socially present to contain your learners, to be able to guide them and to probe them and to go beyond just reading the, the, the text, but to engage in a conversation that's, that's meaningful uh, with them. And how to use, for example, technologies and materials and enhance that. And that's different from perhaps a, a more sort of ongoing long-term commitment uh, from faculty and the institution to improve courses and look at resource, look at the results and, and perhaps submit the course for external review as we, as we provide the service or in the case of, of QM for also allowing faculty to become fa uh, peer reviewers. Just as we receive in our institutions peer reviewers when our institution is under institutional accreditation, at, again, at the more gradual level, uh, faculty at any institution can also become peer reviewer for online courses and go and review courses in different parts of, of, of or throughout the membership and then bring back home those sort of best practices that we have uh, achieved. Uh, as, as one example of this progression, uh, about a year ago, we had the Technical Institute of Monterey, uh, which is, I always describe to my colleagues, it's the MIT of Mexico. They have over 30 years of experience uh, teaching at a distance uh, through satellite, through all the different kinds of technologies, and of course, more recently through their online uh, offers. And they became members of, of QM two years ago. And they've gone through this process from um, preparing their faculty, their designers, their program uh, directors to be exposed to some of the QM training on how to apply the rubrics, for example, uh, to the point of also having the first course in, in Latin America and the Caribbean region to be certified by QM and the lessons that they learned to now having some of the faculty become peer reviewers. And so even in that process, uh, a month ago, I did a, a webinar with one of their members and we, we talk about, we were talking about lessons from international accreditations. They're accredited by SACS. And I had another institution accredited by Middle States uh, who is here in Chile. And in the case of Monterey, they said that even with all that experience, when they went through the process of, of applying the standards, of submitting themselves to the review process, of becoming peer reviewers, it was like we would like tumble them like a wave in, in the ocean uh, with, with all that experience because it, it allowed them to see things differently and organize and uh, their, even their design process and their template courses thinking through the lens of, or through the eyes of the learner, not just through, through the eyes of a faculty member that looks for, 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 for the content. And then I'm looking at time here. So quickly on other, about the institutional level, uh, only address these three aspects. One is, uh, and this is a very nice uh, graphic that describes a, uh, within the QM, of course, process, a, a progression uh, that an institution uh, goes through as they evolve and they commit to this sort of uh, online environment. And I suspect that whether this specific uh, uh, process uh, through QM or through another organizations, given the impact that, that COVID has had globally, really globally, it's not just in specific isolated places, but globally in higher education, those institutions will have to start migrating, integrating into their strategic planning, the, this transition to the online and to the blended environment, and that will come some, something close to this, to sort of uh, adopting certain standards to making it uh, uh, something, something more of a structured process through sustaining uh, their commitment and uh, establishing benchmarks outside their, their, their organizations and the like. So whether, whether it's this process by that we suggest by QM or others, it will be something equivalent. I, I gather some resources. I'm going to paste them actually on the on the on the on the on the right here on the on the chat uh, 
first, I just posted that example, this audio example from a testimonial from, from a faculty member. But I'll post these others in uh, just a resources that are available, free, uh, available through the website from helping institutions migrate from this emergency that most institutions in global, worldwide had to migrate from the from face-to-face uh, -to -face or online, to webinars, to the research library that we have available. Uh, once you do the emergency, we have another resource that takes you to the next step. We call it the bridge to equality. And there are other further resources like for course course reviews our, we offer our conference which this time will will go will be fully online in, in next next month through information about program certification period euro certification and these that i would really uh, recommend especially those who are uh, in a higher level in the organization to take advantage of these kinds of, of, of resources that we put together in collaboration to with, with with another institution where we capture what are some of the major trends uh, going on in, in, uh, in higher education and on online learning. So these are very useful to you to have as a, as a benchmark. As Yapin mentioned, we're very active, A, because of our membership is international, but also because we go out and collaborate uh, with other institutions. And in, 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 in so capturing and, and, and bringing back uh, some best practices and sharing them with with the with our, our member institutions. And I don't know, uh, perhaps Yappy, you want to say something or or Deb about this global award that we obtained by working with Fudan University in China. I think um, because uh, um, of time, let's just move forward. And if anybody okay. who's interested, they can certainly reach out to us. Yes, we'd be happy to. Okay. Share. And one last thing I'll say, even though there's no specific formal link between regional accrediting organizations on QM, at least at the peer review level, most peer reviewers would recognize and we recommend uh, the kinds of specificity that the, kind, the, the standards that QM and QM certification for courses provide because no regional accreditation goes at that level of detail. Uh, and so it's, it's confident you know, for them for institutions to know that at least the online component is uh, uh, is being guided by by some of these uh, practices. Overall, we have more than 10,000 courses reviewed uh, in throughout sort of the history of, of QM. So that speaks for the the volume and and the quality of sort of the lessons learned from from institutions. And just finally, uh, because I serve the region. Uh, in Latin America, I do have some resources in Spanish through my personal website. It's just easier just to upload than going through the, the QM website, and including some of the experiences that I was just talking about, about Tecnológico de Monterrey, you know, what lessons they're learned. So uh, I'll end with this, and this is our, our set of contact information, and let's uh, have some questions. Great, thank you, Fernando, for the resources in Spanish. Think, think. I, I think we have a lot of, of the participants are from Puerto Rico, uh, although we have from the states. And actually, I saw uh, someone identify himself as he's in Italy. So we are international now. <laughs> so thank you for the. The presentation it was wonderful we already have some doubts and questions but Jap Japin have been and me are being able to reply some of them let me see if we miss uh, some of them uh, the main question is if we can share the presentation and i said to them that yes we Absolutely. will Besides, you can send it to us, and then Jelixa will upload not only the recording but also the the presentation. Uh, besides the recording, so you will have both in the same page. Remember, in the same page you register at the bottom of this page, you will see the links and recordings of all the previous uh, webinars. So you that will be there. Uh, let me see if we have any other question. Hey, Fernando, you're putting the links there as well. For, for yes, that, I, I include guess the links. For the resources, right? 
I'm, I'm sorry? That's R for the resources you mentioned in the presentation? Yes, the, the one that I just, yeah, exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect, great. Okay, any other question? This is the time. We still have a more than 80 people connected, so great. That means that it was in, in a very important information. Uh, Dr. Morales have to excuse himself because he have another meeting. Uh, uh, since he have a very busy agenda, but he uh, definitely wants to thank uh, Deb, Japin, and you, Fernando, for being so kind and sharing your time. And um, please uh, uh, let us know if you uh, Ella, need any other information. If someone wants to contact you, I don't know if you put your contact info in the slides, if that is included in, in the slide. your presentation. Yes, it's it's yeah. in the presentation, yes. Perfect, but any any case, uh, we also have their contact info, so you can contact us. Uh, I have a, a question here, but I think when we reach you, if we have doubts after the we, this webinar, Mirza uh, is asking if, if she can reach you. Of course. I guess. Definitely Mirza. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this. It's a strange name. And then, so Ami Santiago says, I'm from Puerto Rico. Okay, I'm from very grateful for the Spanish resources and the checklist. Can you share it? Yeah, he already put the links. And um, Japin just put her email on the chat and Fernando also. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Soami Santiago, you, if you go up, you will see all the links that you can copy, okay, or of the resources. And me, Madalina said, always great to learn about quality matters, quality assurance and examples at other institutions in the US and around the world. Thank you, thank you for that kindly comment. Let me and, and that, in, in that in that sense, I, I really invite you to sort of monitor when, or even register in my website because I, I constantly involve, not just make myself presentations about different aspects of QM, but invite other colleagues to share their experience. And actually, um, we have uh, Omaira here from uh, University of Interamericana in Puerto Rico, and we have something coming up brewing also as well that we want to share. I want to provide a platform for their mm -hmm. for them to share also their experiences. And I constantly do that. It's, it's, it's a great value for us, especially in, in Espanol también, no? And yeah. so that would be very useful. Uh, so I, I invite you to just follow and be sort of attentive to the announcements for different webinars and activities. Definitely. And also together, I invite you, if you want to create something together, I'm happy to, to do that as well. Definitely. And audit from College of Staten Island say thank you very much for a wonderful, useful seminar. Thank you for you uh, to uh, being able to participate. Uh, and yes, you Belkis, you pronounce it correctly. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Bueno, I have the same with my name, so uh, sorry. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad I made it uh, correctly. Uh, every Everybody I say, I'm saying thank you. I, I think your presentation was totally clear, very uh, pertinent on the times that we're living right now in this new academic scenario so thank you so much and remember if you want the certificate please uh, send us an email because in the chat we don't record the chat so send us an email to request the certificate and we hope that you can join us in the next webinar next week and thank you fernando again thank you deb and thank and thank you japin uh, for, for your time and we hope that this is going to be the first ones of many other opportunities to collaborate together. Okay. No yeah. gusto familia. Se, se cuidan y estamos en contacto. Igual. Thank you so much to everyone and have a wonderful afternoon. Happy